Hey everyone, Roger here from Acid Car Experts YouTube channel. Today we're going to be removing the Valvetronic motor. And there's a couple of steps that you need to do before that, so you can check out my video for removal of the valve cover. But this is how I'm removing it today. And it's nice and warm today for a change, so I don't have to have the heater on. But there we go, valve cover off. This component right here is the eccentric shaft motor and it drives via this helical cut gear, it drives the eccentric shaft. Replace this motor, and it does sometimes go bad, it can pull down the five volt sensor system, and what, when that happens, you end up with a bunch of different faults. We need to remove these injector wells. So inside these injector wells, there's two torque screws, T30s, so we're just gonna go down here and take these four out so that we can remove these injector buckets. All right, I have those T30s removed. That means I can take out these injector buckets. This is what it looks like right here. There's, you can see there's a screw there and there's a screw here. And the same thing, you just give them a, a tug. Let's see if I can get this with both hands, pop it free. Just like so. So we've now accessed the Valvetronic motor right here. All right, I shut the garage door so that there won't be so much glare, but this is it right here. Hopefully with this light, you can actually see it better. Here is your motor right here. So are there, there's some steps that need to be done before you can take this off. And you can see this is what drives this helical cut gear right here. With those injector wells out, it really does open everything up. So you can take a look and you can see the valves. You can make sure that everything is seated correctly and we can check both the intake and the exhaust side. Zion wants to go for a walk. You wanna go for a walk? We will shortly. We will shortly. All right, check this out. Using a 14 millimeter wrench, you can go on to the eccentric shaft. I'm over on the intake side over here. And I can actually mechanically activate this. You can see what it's doing. This gear runs. And this is changing my valve position, it's opening my intake valves. Let me show you what I can see on my end. So you can see the Valvetronic motor, here's my gears, and that's driving the intermediate levers, which are right here on the side. You can see there's a cam there. And then that pushes down on the rocker, which is right there, which then opens my valves, right? There's the valve opening right there. Open, and then back to a default position, which is closed. Open, and down. Now with the engine not running, this isn't gonna cause any problem, obviously. All we're doing is opening the valves, and only these two are opening because the cam over here is in a different position. So you can check to see if there's any binding just by doing that. By the way, the bucket screw uh, torque is 10 Newton meters if you're putting that back on. In case I forget to tell you later, which I probably will. Okay, so the next step to removing the Valvetronic motor is we have to remove the oil spray nozzle, which is right here. The oil spray nozzle is an E8. So we have to take that off which this is just a little cool little oil spray nozzle that goes around and just pulls out like so. It just gets clipped right in there. You can see it's hollow because it's like a little oiling can that drips oil on the helical cut gears. There it is right there. We'll get that baby out of the way. And when you're going back on, that is also 10 Newton meters. All right, the next step is to use a four millimeter Allen. And we need to go to maximum stroke. So I'm gonna use my spanner wrench on the opposite side, which was a 14, and I'm gonna just go to maximum stroke that I can reach. I'm gonna put this down into the slot. There's an, a four millimeter Allen screw there, and I wanna put it where it's going to stop itself on the motor, just like that. So that's my holding point because I have to remove this stop, which is right over here. So keep in mind, I'm looking at this. This is the back of the engine back here. This is the front. Here's your intake vanos. 
which is right here. And right here is the stop. So this is the minimum lift stop right here. So you have to remove that. And I believe that is, it's an 11 millimeter. So we have to take this stop out right here. This also is 10 newton meters. I feel like everything right now is 10 newton meters. Okay, there's the stop. You can't forget to put that back in when we're done and we go back together. All right, at this point, right, we're still locked. We're gonna take out our four millimeter and very carefully bring this back. And I just don't want it to snap back. Going to slowly bring this down using an adjustable wrench just on the far side of the camshaft. And basically you are going to the point where it's no longer connected. There we go, just like that. And you can lock it there. It will stay, but it's under spring tension. So let me move so you can see. It can snap back. So I want it to be in the locked position. And basically I turned it so my gearing is no longer meshing right here. And I'm gonna just go a little bit further and that's where it's gonna stay. So as long as I don't bump anything, this is gonna stay in that position. I don't want that to snap back. Right, that way, I'm gonna put this here, that way if it did release on me, at least it should hit right here and get caught. So here's another quick perspective. This is where the minimum lift end point was. That's the max lift on the opposite side. I've rotated all the way around. It is now no longer connected here. You can see there's my gearing. It's all the way deep under the bottom of the camshaft and it's no longer connected to the spiral cut gear right here, which is part of my Valvetronic motor, right? You can see there's my end stop right there and I'm all the way up against the end stop for my maximum lift. That's going to enable me to now take the screws out and remove my Valvetronic motor. Now there's one, two, three screws for the Valvetronic motor. And that also is a T30, very conveniently. Crack all three free. Take these out and show you the Valtronic motor in just a minute. So this is the last one right here. What I just want to mention is if I'm working in the engine, I'm going to be using a magnet. So obviously you're going to be in the front, there'll be less room. I'm going to catch it with a magnet as I take it out and then there's less chance that I'm going to drop it in the engine. Additional side note, these little buckets do have gaskets on them. So these are one-time use. So I took this gasket and moved out of the way. I need to do the same thing with this gasket here. There we go. And you saw me rotating it. So if I try to pull the Valtronic motor out, it won't come out. I'm actually caught by the eccentric shaft. So what I need to do is with these gaskets moved out of the way, just need to rotate it in its housing. Of course, that's the one that's holding me up. Rotate and lift up at the same time and she comes out. And look at that, there's this nice deep well in there and there's the Valvetronic motor. All right, here's the connector on top and it's a big electrical motor. Here's your helical cut gears. And you want to look at these and you want to make sure that there's no score marks. If you do see any chip teeth or score marks on this, you should replace the Valvetronic motor, unless you're replacing it for some other weird electrical issue. So here's the top view, and you can see this nice deep well here. That's where the Valvetronic motor sits, where the, the base of the electronics sits. So you can see that right there, there's that large base. That goes deep inside of the cylinder head. and. It's as simple as that. So it's not very difficult to replace this motor. Now, one thing that you do want to check when you have this out is we want to look to see for any kind of damage on this gear right here. And actually, I can see where it's been running. You can see that line, right? You can see that right there. So I'm going to take a pick and just feel it with a pick to see how deep those grooves are. 
I've seen a lot of technicians replace just the motor, right? And, you, and you're like, all right, I have a fault for some kind of issue where it can't reach its end stops correctly or whatever it is. And they take a look. Yeah, it's a Valtronic motor, slap one in. Well, if you don't look at these helical cut gears, then when you put a new motor in, if this is worn, they lock up. They literally will not run. Even if it's working correctly and you replace it. So whenever you're just thinking about doing the motor, you have to consider that this also could be a problem. And looking at the wear on that, this is a higher mileage car, this also needs to be replaced. So you would actually re need to replace the eccentric shaft with this motor because of the scoring that I see in this eccentric shaft. So you may need to replace the eccentric shaft if you see this scoring. Now, trying to catch it with a pick actually doesn't feel that bad. So you could chance not replacing this, but after you do the Valvetronic motor and you still have an issue, you're gonna go back in and you're gonna need to replace this because sometimes when you have a new motor, the new motor gearing and the eccentric shaft don't mesh well and they can lock up and basically you're still in the same boat until you replace that. So a lot of times, if, I, if you're doing a Valvetronic motor, I would recommend doing the eccentric shaft at the same time, which I'm going to have a video on removing the eccentric shaft. It definitely is a little bit more involved and you need some more special tools. All right, let's say that we're done and we have our new motor. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go in at an angle, turn it, it'll drop down, line it up. Then we have to put our three screws in. With that back in, you tighten these three down to 10 newton meters. Since this engine's never gonna run again, I'm just gonna go ahead and hand tighten these three, but it would be 10 newton meters for this. And then we will mesh the gear of the eccentric shaft back in. All right, so the next step is to gently release. You saw that spring tension pop, and it's now resting on the helical cut gear. So you can use your Allen. Go ahead and slowly engage the worm gear. Nice if I had a T handle for this, but you can see right there. Let me get you a good shot. So straight down here, there is that helical cut, and right there on top is that Allen the four millimeter Allen. So basically I'm just taking my Allen going in and rotating it to engage the worm gear. Here we go. Okay, once I'm pretty much engaged, I can use my 14 to then engage it the rest of the way. Now I need to go back again to max lift here because I need to install and I'm going to have to put the Allen to hold this in place because I have to put my end stop back in. You can see the spring tension brings me back. I'm going to go to my end stop and I'm just going to put my Allen in. Catch that right there and that's going to hold it right there up against the Valvetronic motor. And now I can put my end stop in, right, with my gasket, so I'll put that in place. I have my end stop. I can now put my new gasket in place. There are little locator tabs right there. And then I have my 11 millimeter end stop, which goes right here. And guess what the torque spec is on this? So if you left this out, this is going to run to the max end stop and then come off the helical cut gear and you're going to have a fault that the adjustment was not possible. So don't forget your end stop. Next step is the little oil spray nozzle goes through here. All right, I'm going to pull up. This is almost like a banjo bolt over the top. That gets pushed into as a little holder right there and then go ahead and, and screw in. And we need an E8. And that also is 10 newton meters. Now at this point, you'd put your buckets back on. 
and you can't really install them wrong if you try to you'll just jam them in and you'll realize you have a problem but see this edge right here this is the this cylinder is three and four goes towards all right this is funny don't forget to take out your allen i want to leave that in there. all right so this is going to sit on low to locator going to push in and then we go ahead and put our two screws in and that's going to be 10 newton meters and then on top of that we put our valve cover on a new gasket and the rest of the engine gets put back together so that's how simple it is to remove and replace the valvetronic motor on an n20 n26 and realistically this is the same thing you would do on an n55 so i'm going to leave these buckets out because we're going to have further steps of checking timing and replacing the eccentric shaft itself as part of this video series. So when you have this all back together, your next step really is to just to cycle the key on, don't start the car. The Valvetronic motor will actually do an automatic sweep to its end stops, and then any kind of fault that you had, if you fix the problem, will clear, and you just do a quick clear of all the engine faults, and you'll be able to start the car on the second key cycle without a problem. Now there is a service function that BMW can run or if you have a specific scan tool. You can teach in the end stops and you can do that as a separate step. But in most cases, when you just cycle the key on without starting and someone's listening in the engine compartment, you'll hear it go juke juke because it just runs to its end stops. And that's also a way to, for it to learn the end stops without having to run the test blend. There's an additional test blend that can run to detect if there's any issues or binding in the eccentric shaft. And again, that you'd have to run at your local dealer because they would have the ISTA software required for that test. So you saw how simple it was, not really that hard, no special tools required for this Valvetronic motor replacement. Uh, for the eccentric shaft, there are special tools and for timing checks, which is gonna be coming up in a very soon video, we will need to order some special tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and order those while I have them at home. I'm gonna show you how to time this engine, how to check timing, and how to pin it correctly with the crank pin, which sometimes some people do incorrectly. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my S Car Experts YouTube channel, and everyone have a great day. And a special thanks to Mario and James and A Key Jeeper, uh, all my favorites that comment on my videos and I really appreciate your feedback and the positivity that you spread. Thanks a lot guys and everybody take care.